So now we go to the uh, ultrasonography of the bladder. So for the indications, we have uh, different uh, clinical signs that can be suspicious of a, a bladder problem. So we have dysuria, polycuria, stranguria, or hematuria. Um, we can have also in some cases tenesmus and pain and some incontinence as well. So the ultrasonography of the bladder, the bladder should be well filled. If it's totally empty, then the wall uh, gets uh, thicker and very difficult to evaluate. So uh, we have to wait that the bladder is uh, filled to evaluate the wall and uh, see uh, if there is a problem or not. So the wall itself is uh, constituted of a hypoechoic layer surrounded by two hypoechoic lines and the normal thickness of the wall should be uh, less than 2 mm. Sometimes we can see the insertions of the ureters um, into the wall of the bladder so it will be at the level of the dorsal wall at the trigon of the bladder. We have to be careful when we interpret an ultrasonography of the bladder. It's uh, because there is a lot of artifacts uh, that are created at the level of the bladder. So like for example here we have some reverberation that are due to the reverberation of the ultrasound beam on the abdominal wall and on the ventral wall of the bladder. Then we have some range ambiguity artifacts like we can see here that are creating very uh, abnormal images within the bladder lumen. So it's in general when the bladder is very distended with, with urine and when we use uh, diff multiple focal points here on the side that we will see this artifact appear. Then we have the side and grating lobes that are creating all those uh, uh, hyzoechoic appearance in the ventral in the dorsal aspect of the bladder and um, this is also an artifact and shouldn't be uh, think well we shouldn't think that it, this is a um, sediment or a pathology in the bladder and then we can have some refraction artifacts when there is ascites so when you have ascites of fluid around the bladder plus the fluid in the bladder we can have some refraction that creates a false interruption of the um, bladder wall and we uh, don't have to think that this is a, an interruption due to rupture uh, it's just an artifact uh, due to refraction so to decrease the artifacts we have to uh, either use only one focal point like we uh, have there here it's four so that's definitely too much so we should just use one and uh, we should use also harmonic imaging to decrease the side uh, and grating loops. So in the bladder we can have different uh, problems so the most common problems are uh, just cystitis. So it can be acute cystitis but in general with acute cystitis we don't see anything on the ultrasonographic examination. With a chronic cystitis we can see a wall thickening and it will be more prominent on the cranioventral aspect of the bladder. Sometimes, but that's quite rare, the cystitis can be polypoid so with the small pedunculated masses and here we will have um, we'll have to differentiate that from neoplasia. We have also emphysematous cystitis that appears sometimes. So in fact it's a cystitis due to uh, an infection due to gas producing or glucose fermenting bacteria and then we'll have presence of gas in the bladder wall, in the lumen or in the ligaments uh, of the bladder. Um, which normally we don't normally we don't see any gas in the bladder unless you have catheterized it before the ultrasound examination but otherwise there shouldn't be any gas in the bladder so if we see gas it's suspicious of an emphysematous cystitis so gas can be difficult to see because it will create like we have here a hyperechoic line and then some dirty shadowing underneath it uh, so just typical gas pattern like we can see in a GI tract for example. But 
um, the problem of the bladder is that often, as I said, there is a lot of artifacts with some reverberations and it can sometimes be a bit difficult to differentiate between those reverberations and this gas. So what we can do, it's uh, either use different position uh, of the dog to see if the gas is moving and how it is moving. If we still have a doubt, we can also uh, take a, a radiograph because then the gas will really appear clearly on the bladder, uh, in the bladder and in the bladder wall and lumen. So uh, on the radiograph, it will be very, um, uh, very clear that the gas is within the bladder and it's not an artifact. Here another example on the cystitis with again a bit of gas here and also here within the, the wall of the, the bladder, so the dorsal wall. Uh, if the gas was free in the lumen, it should go up uh, with the, to the uh, non-dependent uh, side. So here it's staying along the dorsal wall, so it means that the gas is within the wall itself, like we can see here on this radiograph. What we can see also with ultrasonographic examination of the bladder is, of course, the calculi that are quite frequent. So the calculi, again, like in the kidney, they have this typical round hyperechoic shape with a strong acoustic shadow. It's uh, uh, very typical of calculi, um, so very easy to see with ultrasound when it's not always so easy to see with radiography, eh, especially if they are not radiopaque. And then we can have uh, ureterosol, um, which is a, a dilation of the ureter at the level of the entrance into the bladder. So that's in, gen in general congenital. But we can have also intramural ectopic ureter. Uh, again, uh, it will be in general dilated, uh, hypoechoic, and within the wall of the bladder itself. Um, and we can have some diverticulum of the bladder uh, that can be visible on ultrasound. In the bladder, what is commonly seen also, it's uh, blood clots. Uh, in general, we see them when uh, there have been a, a trauma of a, for the dog, or if there is some bleeding disorders, infection, or neoplasia. Um, those blood clots, they can be either isoechoic or hypoechoic. Uh, they have an irregular shape and they don't create any shadow to differentiate them with the uh, stones, well, from stones. Sometimes they have, uh, they are quite adherent to the wall and uh, they can be sometimes difficult to differentiate from a mural mass or from a neoplasia. So it can be tricky in some cases to differentiate between a blood clot and a neoplasia if it's uh, really adherent to the wall and not moving at all. Uh, here the hemorrhage is within the complete bladder lumen, so it's uh, more easy to determine if it's hemorrhage. And then if you have a doubt, of course, then you can just do an ultrasound guided cystocentesis and then see if the urine is bloody or, or not. The neoplasia of the bladder is quite common, so as we said previously, it will appear as a mural mass. So we have an example here. It's in general quite heterogeneous with a irregular surface uh, and uh, some broad base. So the, in fact, the broad base is quite an important criteria, for example, to differentiate it from the uh, polypoid cystitis, where we said that we have some pedunculated uh, masses. Here, when it's broad base, it's very suspicious of neoplasia. Uh, most of those bladder tumors are transitional cell carcinoma, and uh, they have a predisposed location uh, of the bladder trigone, so in this uh, area, so here it's one example of transitional cell carcinoma that was growing, uh, but here it's taking the complete dorsal wall of the bladder. So when the neoplasia it's, is at this level, uh, so at the level of the trigon, so the entrance of the ureters, we can have a secondary obstruction of the ureters and then again hydroureters and hydronephrosis that are secondary uh, to this problem. Here we have some other examples of bladder neoplasia. Uh, we see this uh, 
quite well-defined borders, but always a bit irregular uh, in uh, on the surface, um, and always attached to the wall with a broad base. Yeah.